Hello everybody, I'm Namita Thapar, Executive Director of MQ Pharmaceuticals. Today, we're talking about a very emotional, a very important topic, breast cancer. 25% of cancers in women are breast cancers. That just talks about the prevalence, the significance and the importance of becoming aware and early detection. A few quotes that I came across that were truly hard hitting. Since diagnosis, I felt a huge spectrum of emotions, denial, anger, pain and trauma. When I was told I needed a mastectomy, my first thought was, will it diminish my femininity? But after all these emotions settle, you have only two choices, give up or fight like hell. So today we have two wonderful fighters with us. We have Tahira Kashyap and we have Minakshi Khosla. And we have our experts, Padmashri Dr. Ramakan Deshpande and Dr. Sevanti Limay. Dr. Ramakant, why don't we start with you in terms of what are the basic differences in breast cancer between what you see in India and what you see in Western countries. Can you talk a bit more about it? Exactly like what you said, 24% of these women cancers were breast cancer. So somewhere around 1,25,000 were new cancer breast patients. So if you take a statistics, in a girl child, the chance is 1 in 28 or 29 girl children will get breast cancer sometime in their breast, in, wow. in their uh, lifetime. Now, that's bad. But, you know, if you really compare it to the Western countries, it's like one in nine there. Oh, that's a so high yes, number. That's a very high number. And uh, the reasons are multiple. The reasons for breast cancer are one is one of the things which ke people keep on talking about, but which is not really that great is genetics or heredity. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is barely about 5%. 95% are not because of that. Then obesity because of lack of exercises, oral contraceptives. Um, the history of past breast surgery somewhere else, um, you know, long pr reproductive life uh, 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 duration, which means that having their menses start early before the age of nine or stop beyond the age of 55. So that that makes their reproductive life really very long. So and not having a child early in, in life. So these are some of the reasons because of which breast cancer becomes preponderant. Uh, Obesity is one of the main things. So there are certain things like the genetic factors on which you have no control, but there are many other things which you can actually control. One of them is, you know, do a regular self checkup, have a, a, a mammogram or, or whatever the doctors have advised you and, and then follow it up with the doctors very, very regularly. What we actually advise for uh, ladies is we don't really advise mammogram till the age of 40. Okay. So after that, it's just done, generally done once in, a, once in three years if there is no history. Mm -hmm. If there's no family history or if there's no history of breast cancer, then maybe once in three years is good enough. But if there's a history, then once in a year is something what we advised at least till the age of 60 years of age. And if by 60 years of age, uh, the person has not developed any problem, then once in two years is good enough. Cancer breast, surprisingly, there's no reason why it should be uh, so difficult to pursue. Because uh, it's a surface organ. The commonest symptoms are like feeling a lump in the breast, mm -hmm. change in the skin or dimpling or an ulceration of the breast, having a discharge from the nipple or areola of blood stained or any kind of discharge. Uh, lump could be either in the breast or in the armpit. A redness of the skin of the breast. These are common symptoms which any woman will notice. Then why do they not really approach the doctor? Exactly like what I said, either fear. They don't want to know. It's an ostrich's approach. If I don't go to a doctor, it may turn out that it is not a breast cancer True. at all. True. So breast cancer can present in various stages. It could be a, a early stage where the lump is very small, confined only in the breast. That's stage one. Then it can go spread, become a little larger or go into the armpit nodes, lymph glands. Mm -hmm. That's stage two. Then if it goes bigger and spreads into the neck or something nodes, that's stage three. And when it gets disseminated, it's, it's stage four. In terms of the treatment options, depending on the stage you're in, how would you treat a patient who comes to you? See, conceptually, the breast cancer starts at one point and then it starts spreading. So it would go into the axilla or through the blood, it could go elsewhere straight away. Uh, if the thing is very, if the breast tumor is very small, in, confined to the breast, that of course you do various investigations to confirm that. Investigations like clinical examination, then you do chest x-ray, sonography, PET CT scan, etc. Then a biopsy. Once you do all that, then we stage the disease with a PET CT scan. If it's still confined only to the breast, then a a manual removal, a surgical removal is good enough for quite often curing. You also test the armpit lymph glands. 
to make it sure that it is not spread elsewhere. So, so the local treatment is good enough. But if it spread a little beyond that, then you need actually uh, um, further treatments uh, like radiation therapy, like uh, the chemotherapy, targeted therapy, no matter what happens from stage one to stage four, the decision making is always by a group of doctors. So you have the surgeon, you have the medical oncologist, you have the radiation oncologist, you have the pathologist, you have the rehabilitation specialist, everybody puts their head, heads together and the team is the one which actually decides about the further uh, management and, and the progress. Absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, Dr. Sevanthi, just like he said, could you tell us a bit more about the treatment from your perspective and your expertise? Uh, so one of the things that is very uh, apparent in breast cancer is that the disease requires to be treated by multiple kinds of specialists. So surgical role is there up front, but the other team of doctors work together just like Sir described, uh, wherein the patient has to come prepared that there will be a series of treatments that will have their own value. And the reason to be prepared for that is then you are seeking the best care, not avoiding. And the uh, reason to seek the best care is mainly to hit the cure rates that Sir just quoted. So that's the onus that we have to really understand that it's a multi-specialty mm -hmm. field where all these um, treatments have their own role and the patient should uh, enable themselves, empower themselves with the right kind of information to be able to seek the right treatment. Thank you so much for explaining that. Sure. And you know, one of the things you mentioned, I'll come back to that, you said that a lot of times people do a preventive uh, mastectomy um, and that's becoming increasingly common in India as well uh, because that's very common in the West, right? So what are your thoughts on that um, in terms of, uh, is, does that really help? Uh, what are the ways uh, women decide whether to go in for that or not? That's what is called as an Angelina Jolie effect. Okay. <laughs> so um, uh, that's very interesting because, uh, uh, see, uh, for a woman, a breast is basically a symbol of uh, femininity. So anything which disturbs that is not truly welcome. What happens is in about 5 to 7% of people, you have a genetic abnormality which predisposes them for development of a malignancy. And this, unfortunately, it causes two types of malignancies. One is the breast, which is surface malignancy, which can be, you know, you can inspect it, monitor it, uh, uh, examine it, treat it in time, whatever it is. But it also causes ovarian malignancy. Mm -hmm. What happens is any, any person who is very young, below the age of 35, who has bilateral breast cancers, who has a history of breast cancer in three people, in the immediate uh, uh, relatives are what we call as a familial kind of a tendency. So we always examine them for genetic abnormalities. This is called BRCA1 and BRCA2. So these, 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 those people who have these malignancies have a greater tendency of like, it's like 60 to 70% of these women will develop breast cancer before the age of 50. Okay. okay? So what do you do if you have somebody who's fairly young, say a, a lady of 30? Uh, if she comes with uh, and says that, okay, I have a BRCA1 positive, what would you tell her? Get married, finish off your family fast, which means that you have your children, everything. Use your, use your ovaries, use your breast for feeding, whatever this particular thing is there. Then if you are willing, then you, you can have removal of the breast tissue. And, you know, if you don't have a tumor sitting there, you can do a very, very uh, uh, cosmetic kind of a surgery, which is which we call as a subcutaneous mastectomy, okay. which means that you keep the skin, nipple, areola, everything intact. You reconstruct that particular breast using prosthesis or, or the patient's fat or the patient's muscle, everything. Cosmetically, it will look exactly the same like what it would be, but it would be a kind of a sag-proof kind of a breast and there will be no breast tissue to develop malignancy from. So these are all preventive treatments which were not known earlier. They were not heard. They were not accepted. But people are slowly and steadily, they are also coming here. You know, one of the biggest focus areas of this show is to break taboos and stigmas because women you know tend to talk about health issues in such hushed tones or then they don't talk about it at all can you talk a bit more about that yes you know indian society still continues to be very conservative and surprisingly enough you know when you start rising in social scale it becomes more and more conservative yeah. women who are diagnosed even in early stage quite often delay the whole treatment because the daughter's engagement is pending or a marriage is coming in in the family and you know what will people say if they know that I have breast cancer, please understand one fundamental thing. Cancer can be cured 
in 95% of patients in case of stage 1, that's about 70% in stage 2, that's about 60% in stage 3, and even in stage 4, many, many, many people will live for at least 10 years. When we talk about stigma, uh, very affluent, well-educated families are still delaying getting to the doctor, getting to the center. Um, denial or uh, just the hesitation that this will amount to uh, despair within the family. But then what I also want to give a message for, for some reason, if your therapy is delayed, don't give up. Absolutely. And, and you know, Dr. Sevanthi, you said a very important word which we didn't touch upon in our conversation, which is recurrence. Right. Do you have any statistics around that in terms of, you know, we see a lot of relapse or recurrence of breast cancer. Can you just talk about it? So actually when Sir was saying uh, about the survival, so think about, you know, when he said 70% uh, in a particular stage, right? So stage 2, 70%. So the 30% is relapsing. Okay. 30% is coming back, Got it. you know, so 95%, that 5% is coming back. We have to catch the disease early so that we treat early. If you delay that, then you come to higher chances of recurrence. Thank you, doctor. And now we move to our two lovely ladies. First, let's start with you, Meenakshi. Uh, when I read about you and your history and I heard that you got breast cancer 10 years back, but then about seven years back, you turned into an entrepreneur at the age of 50. Right. Um, I was truly inspired. I mean, that's just fantastic. Uh, could you, you tell so us much. a bit more about your journey? We'd love to hear about it. When I had a very tiny lump and I was very sure that this cannot be cancer. So I chose to got it removed, you know, from a general surgeon. And then he had arranged for a uh, frozen section. They detected within half an hour that whether it is cancerous or no. And then I was directed to Dr. Ramakant Deshpande. I had to go through chemotherapy, radiation therapy, everything. This cancer has made me more positive and more full of life. And I think I'm leading a better life now. I'm not made up of lumpectomy. I'm not made up of chemotherapy. I'm not made up of radiation. I'm made up of will. Yeah. I'm made up of positivity. And I'm made up of spreading love. That's it. Oh my God, that was so beautiful. Yeah. So beautifully said and straight from your heart. Thank you so much, Meenakshi, for sharing this with us. It's so beautiful to sit you so with much. you and listen and hear you talk and how at the age of 50, had you not said 50, I would have said 35. No, she's 57. <laughs> no, she started the business at 50. Now you're 57, right? Yes. Oh, and look wow. at her. Wow. She oh, didn't need I any makeup. Cancer does good also. It's good negatively. Yes. <laughs> And that takes us to Tahira Kashyap Khurana. Why don't you tell us about your journey, Tahira? My journey was something that I've, I've spoken about um, as well. So I was undergoing some sort of depression and sadness. I didn't acknowledge that for the longest period of time. And that was gnawing at me. And that's what was taking me down. You know, there is um, obesity or alcohol or drug or reproductive years and all of that, genes. I somehow... You know, I was a no, 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 no for all the categories. And I was 35 when I had, uh, when I was detected with breast cancer. Uh, I had two kids. Uh, I married pretty much in time. Menstrual cycle was everything in place. Um, no family history whatsoever. And I get, got to know there was uh, the youngest patient who was a breast cancer patient was at the age of 17 or 19. So, uh, I mean, so, and I'm sure uh, uh, you would conquer too. But for some people like me, things do happen. And so I started having symptoms and I ignored it. And this is, I'm a BSc biotechnology student. I'm a graduate in sciences and I've done my mm. master's in mass communication and journalism yet. And I belong to a very privileged background in the sense of education, in terms of reaching out to the hospital. Everything is in my vicinity and in my control. Yet, um, I never, never thought that having a heavy breast uh, could mean breast cancer. I was actually celebrating, you know, my one breast has grown bigger now. I'm, I always wanted big breasts in life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I we like, all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was like, Achha, chalo, ek ho gaya, no, the second one will catch up soon. <laughs> but the second one didn't grow only. <laughs> so, and then I started getting a secretion. And that's when I was uh, uh, told that I have some stage of cancer and the reports will come in. 
my reaction was not oh, with god's grace touch wood till now i haven't asked why me and what makes us think that cancer is a bigger problem and uh, a marital discord is a lesser problem right. so when i was detected with cancer i was like okay here is my challenge <laughs> i'm going to use it as my springboard i'm going to bounce on it i'm going to do all that i didn't do before and uh, there is a reason why it's happened to me perhaps i can spread um, knowledge about it one important thing about you is you come from a very superficial world in terms of uh, you know your husband uh, ayushman khurana is a very popular bollywood actor and i know you've spoken about uh, being bald and being very comfortable with it so how did you deal with that i don't know i don't think i agree with the superficiality of it i don't know whether it's a superficial world by the end of it isn't the entire world that we're living in superficial by the end of it aren't our instagram accounts and twitter accounts the best version of what's going on in a day that's mm -hmm. superficial too i think each one of us has a garb to put the best foot forward like the put the best face in front of the world but all of us are going through our own problems and obstacles honestly speaking it's you how you perceive the world i don't take any pressure like you can see i'm pretty much unfiltered in the way i speak <laughs> uh, not typically uh, how uh, someone would be expected to speak like you said and you've got lovely hair and you went through uh, yeah. losing all of that Did you as go well to chemotherapy yes, yes can you talk uh, about it i really enjoyed even the period of baldness i took it very positively and i just went through and that was the way of life you know i must confess that when i was researching on this show i was very intimidated because you know when you see the statistics when you read the data when you see the pictures uh you 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 go through a lot of fear and i didn't know how this show will um, pan out but the amount of laughter the amount of positivity the amount of bonding um Uh, it's it's been incredible so this is one of those shows i just don't want it to end and i'd like to end on a very positive note with something beautiful that tahira wrote on uh, world cancer day on february 4th we'll share the entire poem with you because it's truly beautiful but the two sentences that really stood out for me personally and will stay with me forever is what she wrote about scars she wrote about scars symbolizing the fight the word she uses very often resilience and your invincible power and she wrote about acceptance accept the imperfect you and celebrate that i think that is something we often forget to do and so i urge all the women out there not just the ones suffering from breast cancer but those having emotional scars physical scars to really look at scars positively the way tahira has written in her poem and thank you so much Uh, to these two lovely women dhoondne hai wo nikli ho takdeer apni ujli dhoondne hai wo nikli takdeer apni ujli illi ne man mein thana hai ban ke udna